NASA just discovered Boeing has zero rockets left for astronauts, and America's space program could collapse. Boeing's been lying about Atlas V availability, while SpaceX quietly cornered the market. Now Boeing faces the ultimate humiliation. Beg Elon Musk to save them, or watch their $4.2 billion NASA contract vanish forever. But what SpaceX demands in return will shock you. Let's dive right in. Picture this, Boeing's entire space future hanging on exactly five rockets. Not 50, not 500, just five. And here's the killer. They need six for their NASA contract alone. The math is so brutal, it's almost funny. Almost. But wait, it gets worse. Each Atlas V costs $200 million and takes two years to build. ULA stopped production in 2020, thinking they had plenty of time to transition to Vulcan. They were dead wrong. So how did Boeing end up in this impossible position? The answer reveals the most catastrophic strategic failure in aerospace history. Back in 2014, NASA made a decision that seemed brilliant. Give Boeing $4.2 billion and SpaceX $2.6 billion to develop competing crew vehicles. Competition breeds excellence, right? Wrong. It bred dependency. Boeing chose ULA's Atlas V as their exclusive ride to space. No backup plan. No alternatives. They literally bet their entire space program on a rocket that was already being phased out. Why? Because Boeing executives thought they were too big to fail. Meanwhile, SpaceX built their own rockets. They controlled their destiny. Boeing. They handed their fate to ULA on a silver platter. But here's where the story takes its first shocking twist. ULA knew Atlas V was doomed, and they never told Boeing the truth about their production timeline. Internal ULA documents reveal a classified project called Operation Sunset. Their plan to kill Atlas V production by 2019, three years earlier than publicly announced. Why the rush? Money. Atlas V was bleeding ULA dry at $200 million per rocket, while SpaceX's Falcon 9 was dominating the market at $67 million. ULA needed Vulcan to compete, and every Atlas V they built delayed Vulcan's development. So they quietly stopped ordering Atlas V components in 2018, effectively signing Boeing's death warrant. Boeing didn't find out until 2021, when it was already too late. The betrayal was complete. ULA had sacrificed their oldest customer to save themselves. ULA promised Boeing that Vulcan would be ready by 2020, then 2021, then 2022. Each delay pushed Boeing deeper into the Atlas V shortage. But the real horror? Vulcan's development has been an absolute disaster. Two explosions during testing, engine supply chain collapses, software failures so severe that the rocket's computer systems crashed during static fire tests. Even worse, Amazon swooped in and bought 38 Vulcan launches for their Kuiper satellites at a discount, while Boeing was left scrambling for scraps. Jeff Bezos essentially bought ULA's entire production capacity leaving Boeing with nothing. The same Jeff Bezos who owns Blue Origin, SpaceX's biggest rival. This wasn't business, this was warfare. Boeing's spacecraft troubles make their rocket shortage look simple. During their last crewed test flight, everything that could go wrong did. Thrusters overheated to 2000 degrees, hot enough to melt steel. Helium leaked throughout the propulsion system. Software glitches caused the spacecraft to think it was in the wrong orbit. The mission that should have lasted eight days stretched to 240 days as NASA scrambled to understand the failures. The final insult? NASA decided Starliner was too dangerous to bring the crew home. They had to wait for a SpaceX Dragon rescue mission. Boeing's CEO claimed the fixes were straightforward, but internal engineering reports tell a different story. Over 147 separate technical issues requiring resolution before the next flight. While Boeing struggled, SpaceX quietly executed the most brilliant business strategy in aerospace history. They didn't just build rockets, they built an empire. Falcon 9 launches every 2.7 days on average. That's not just frequency, it's dominance. They've captured 70% of the global launch market while Boeing can't even get their spacecraft off the ground. But here's the masterstroke. SpaceX is now so busy with their own missions 
that they can dictate terms to desperate customers. Like Boeing. Want a Falcon 9 launch? Get in line behind Starlink, NASA, the military, and commercial customers. Boeing would be lucky to get a slot in 2027. Jeff Bezos hasn't just been competing with SpaceX. He's been systematically sabotaging them through market manipulation. Amazon's Kuiper project ordered launches from every major rocket company except SpaceX. ULA, Blue Origin, Ariane Space. Everyone got contracts. This wasn't about redundancy. It was about denying SpaceX market share while propping up weaker competitors. But the real genius? Bezos convinced these companies to prioritize Amazon's launches over existing customers like Boeing. He essentially bought his way to the front of every launch queue. The result? Boeing gets pushed further back in line while Amazon advances their satellite constellation. It's economic warfare disguised as business strategy. Pentagon officials are quietly panicking. America's space access is being consolidated into the hands of two men, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, two tech billionaires who despise each other and have very different political views. What happens if Musk's political controversies lead to Dragon being grounded? What if Bezos decides Blue Origin is more important than ULA? What if China attacks one of their facilities? Boeing was supposed to be America's insurance policy. Instead, they've become a cautionary tale about corporate incompetence in a critical national security sector. Boeing's failure isn't just about one company. It's triggering a cascading collapse across the entire aerospace industry. Sierra Space's dream chaser faces identical problems. Total dependence on ULA rockets that don't exist. Virgin Galactic needs reliable launches for their space tourism business. Dozens of satellite companies have booked Atlas five flights that will never happen. The total economic impact? Over $30 billion in stranded investments and canceled projects. Boeing's incompetence is killing the entire commercial space industry. This brings us to Boeing's ultimate humiliation. They have exactly three options, and they're all terrible. Option one, wait for Vulcan certification and hope Amazon doesn't consume all available rockets. Timeline, 2027 at the earliest. Probability of success, 15%. Option two, cancel Starliner entirely and forfeit $4.2 billion in NASA contracts. Financial impact, bankruptcy level losses, probability, 25%. Option three, beg SpaceX for launch services and accept whatever terms Musk demands. Probability, 60%. The math is brutal, but the choice is clear. Boeing will have to crawl to their biggest competitor and ask for help. Industry sources reveal SpaceX's negotiating position is more aggressive than anyone imagined. They're not just demanding money. They want strategic concessions that would reshape the entire aerospace industry. Shared technology access, joint mission planning, equity stakes in Boeing's space division, even naming rights on future missions. But the most shocking demand? SpaceX wants Boeing's NASA commercial crew contract transferred to them entirely. They'll launch Boeing's astronauts, but under SpaceX's control and with SpaceX's branding. It would be the ultimate conquest, Musk not just defeating Boeing, but absorbing them entirely. NASA's patience isn't infinite. Internal documents show a critical deadline. If Boeing can't demonstrate reliable crewed flights by March 2026, NASA will reallocate their mission slots to SpaceX permanently. Boeing would keep the development money, but lose all operational revenue. A $4.2 billion participation trophy for the biggest failure in aerospace history? The clock is ticking. Atlas V rockets are disappearing. Vulcan remains grounded. Starliner is broken. Boeing has maybe 18 months to solve problems that have plagued them for over a decade. The odds are not in their favor. If Boeing fails, and all evidence suggests they will, SpaceX won't just win the commercial crew competition. They'll have achieved something unprecedented. Total control over American human spaceflight. Every astronaut, every mission, every dollar of NASA's crew transportation budget, all flowing through one company controlled by one man. It's the opposite of everything NASA intended when they created the commercial crew program. Competition was supposed to prevent monopolies, not create them. But Boeing's incompetence has handed Musk the keys to America's space future on a silver platter. The most painful twist? Boeing's failure directly funded SpaceX's success. 
Every delayed Boeing mission meant more revenue for SpaceX. Every Starliner problem forced NASA to buy more Dragon flights. Every Atlas V shortage pushed customers toward Falcon 9. Boeing didn't just fail to compete with SpaceX, they accidentally became SpaceX's biggest customer recruiter. The aerospace giant that once dominated space exploration is now reduced to begging their startup competitor for mercy. And the scariest part? This is just the beginning. With Starship on the horizon, SpaceX's dominance will only grow stronger while Boeing spirals deeper into irrelevance. The question isn't whether Boeing will survive this crisis. The question is whether American space exploration can survive Boeing's collapse. Time is running out, the Atlas is falling, and SpaceX is the only one left standing. So here we are, Boeing, the company that built the Apollo command modules, the space shuttle, the International Space Station, reduced to begging their startup rival for survival. It's the ultimate David and Goliath story, except David won so decisively that he's now the giant everyone else fears. But this raises a question that should keep every space fan awake at night. Is SpaceX's dominance actually good for humanity's space future? Sure, they're incredibly efficient and innovative. But what happens when one company controls everything? History shows us that monopolies eventually become complacent. They stop innovating. They start prioritizing profits over progress. Will SpaceX be different, or are we just trading Boeing's incompetence for Musk's unchecked power? The next few months will determine not just Boeing's fate, but the entire structure of human spaceflight for decades to come. And honestly, I think we're about to witness the most dramatic corporate collapse in aerospace history. What do you think? Should we celebrate SpaceX's victory or worry about what comes next? Drop your thoughts below, because this story is far from over. The ISS is cracking apart, costing $150 billion. SpaceX just revealed their genius trick that makes every competitor's plan worthless overnight. One Starship delivers more space than the entire ISS for just $10 million. But here's the insane part nobody saw coming. What if you launch 20 of them? Let's dive right in. Picture this. Right now, 250 miles above your head, astronauts are literally drinking filtered urine while floating in a metal tube that's cracking apart. The International Space Station isn't just aging gracefully. It's dying a slow, expensive death, and everyone knows it. Here's what's actually happening up there. The Russian Zvezda module, the part that keeps everyone breathing, has been bleeding precious air into the vacuum of space since 2019. We're not talking about a small leak you can patch with space duct tape. This is the life support nerve center slowly hemorrhaging the one thing you absolutely cannot live without in space. But wait, it gets worse. Just last month, a cargo ship arrived and immediately started pumping toxic fumes throughout the station. Astronauts scrambled to seal themselves in because whatever was floating around smelled like industrial spray paint. In space, where there's nowhere to run. And here's the kicker that'll blow your mind. After 25 years and $150 billion, astronauts still have to wedge themselves into storage cabinets just to sleep because this marvel of engineering doesn't even have proper beds. Does this sound like the future of space exploration to you? Now here's the part that should make taxpayers everywhere lose their minds. This floating disaster cost $150 billion. That's more money than most countries see in a decade. And what exactly did we get for that astronomical price tag? A cramped laboratory running on Windows 95 era computers that astronauts have nicknamed the floating plumbing depot. I wish I was making this up. Half their time is spent unclogging waste systems and chasing down leaks in zero gravity. The other half? Trying to keep 1980s technology from completely shutting down. But here's where the story takes a dramatic turn. While NASA scrambles to find replacement solutions, throwing billions more at companies like Blue Origin and Axiom Space for stations that won't be ready until the 2030s, something extraordinary is already sitting on a launch pad in Texas. Something that makes every billion-dollar proposal look like ancient history. Something that's about to completely destroy the commercial space station market before it even gets started. 
Enter SpaceX's Starship. When people see this rocket for the first time, their brains literally cannot process what they're looking at. Humans crawling around it during tests look like ants on a skyscraper. And when it's fully fueled, that frosty layer you see, everything above that is basically empty space waiting to become your new home in orbit. But here come the numbers that don't make sense. The main living area alone gives you 1,000 cubic meters of space. The entire International Space Station, built over decades with the combined efforts of five space agencies, has 935 cubic meters. Stop and think about that for a second. One rocket, more space than a $150 billion space station. But wait, there's more. Elon Musk says launching this thing costs under $10 million. Some estimates put it at 20 million tops. So let me get this straight. For less than the cost of a single Hollywood blockbuster, SpaceX can deliver more living space than humanity's greatest space achievement? How is this even mathematically possible? The answer lies in the genius trick that's about to make every competitor panic. Traditional space stations are like building the most expensive house in history, then throwing away all your tools and never being able to fix anything. Every component of the ISS was launched once and abandoned in space forever. When something breaks, you're basically screwed. There's no coming home for repairs. Starship just broke that rule completely. Every single piece of this rocket comes back to Earth. The massive booster lands upright like something out of a sci-fi movie. The upper stage returns from orbit. If your space station develops problems, you don't abandon it like the ISS. You bring the entire thing back, fix it in a proper workshop on Earth, and launch it again. But here's the part that changes everything. Starship wasn't designed to be a space station. It was engineered to keep hundreds of people alive and comfortable during eight-month journeys to Mars. The livability features aren't add-ons. They're built into the core DNA of this machine. Think about this logically. If you can design a vehicle to keep people happy and healthy for eight months in deep space, what happens when you just park it in Earth orbit? You get the most luxurious space habitat ever built, and it happens almost by accident. Now, here's where things get really wild, and this is the part most people completely miss. Most of Starship's interior is currently filled with massive fuel tanks. Those tanks are essential for launch and landing, but here's the kicker. Once you're permanently parked in orbit, you don't need them anymore. Strip out those fuel tanks and suddenly you've unlocked 3,000 cubic meters of interior space. That's three times bigger than the entire International Space Station. You could comfortably house